Hi guys, Albert with Open Source Self Defense and Fitness. Um, I just wanted to put out a quick video. Uh, we got some really good feedback and response from what uh, what to look for in a uh, self defense or martial arts program, and so. Um, I wanted to just go ahead and do a video and name the top three things. There's more things you want to look for in a good self-defense or martial arts program, but I just wanted to cover the top three quickly. So first and foremost is sparring. You want to go to a school, you want to go to a program that spars. Number two, the way that they train actually promotes physical fitness. They, they train at a high intensity level so that you actually are getting fit through the training. And then number three would be instructor participation. Okay, so you want an instructor that is physically fit enough to participate in the training and um, also uh, participates in the sparring and the fitness, fitness aspects. Now I understand that all of these things, you know, there are outliers, there are, you know, exceptions to the rule, but these are the basic rules, okay? <clears throat> so when it comes to sparring, the reason why sparring is important is because it is probably the most efficient training method when it comes to training techniques, okay? It gives you both a linear and a randomized style of learning, okay? And if you don't understand all about those things, that's fine. Just understand that, you know, it gives you a realistic feel, right? Going against real resistance lets you know if a technique is legitimate or not. Um, number two is the uh, the fitness, right? So in self-defense, one of the uh, biggest things that you can use uh, when it comes to self-defense is to be able to run or, or outpace your opponent so that you can have an avenue of escape, having the endurance to survive, right? The endurance to run away. Those things are legitimate ways to defend yourself. So that's super important. And then, like I said, with the instructor, yes, there are sometimes reasons why an instructor cannot participate, but if they're beyond the injury or the outlier type of situation, it really should be a red flag if the instructor isn't participating in the sparring, in the fitness aspect, if they are not fit enough to, to participate in the class themselves, that's generally a red flag. So that's basically all we have. Uh, that's my son in the background. He's uh, trying to get in there. Yeah. Hey, Ethan. Okay. So anyhow, guys, we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot for all the great feedback on the uh, public service announcement. And uh, hopefully we'll see you down at our women's self-defense seminar that we're doing at the book vault. Okay. That's uh, in February. So look us up. Talk to you later.